Seals are good. Oxygen's good. Just do what you did last time, and you're fine. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple rule? Listen to Lynn. Boss lady knows best. Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. It's just like, um, yeah, I work in the Star Dock. Except, uh, with more cave-ins, lasers, and accidental dismemberment. Very helpful. Thank you. Ah, you're gonna be fine. Your first outing was solid. And, you know, let's be honest, it ain't exactly astrophysics. That's why I keep him around. Good pep talks. Yeah. And the fact that I can pinpoint a helium deposit from 300 meters. <laughs> Not untrue. A shame we won't find any down here. But the metal deposits alone should pay for our own helium. Hell, after this, we'll have enough jump fuel to bounce from one end of the settled systems to the next. Hey, more minerals, more money. And so the cycle repeats itself. Just no more unauthorized jumps in a house for room space, okay? He's just a big baby. There are worse lives. You know, most Dusties don't even make it this far. I have a good feeling about you. Right, group hug now or at the end of the shift? <sighs> One of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Promises, promises. Grab some samples? Always. Uh, but not you. Check on Isabel. Make sure she eases up on the breach. I don't feel like getting buried alive today. Roger that. Remember, Dusty. Keep your breathing steady. And never take that helmet off down here. Oxygen processors don't extend this far. Yeah. Because God forbid we drill on a rock with a breathable atmosphere. Know what I love about working in Freestyle Collective Space? Fewer regs. A job like this in the United Colonies? Huh. Please, red tape. Ugh. Look at this one over here. Calvert! No! Ah, no, no, no! It's a laser, not a sledgehammer! Ease up! Benning, if you got paid per break, you'd be a millionaire! Let's go! Yeah, yeah, okay. What do we say, Dusty? You make your cut, you get your cut. No exceptions. Come on, pick it up! Troy, what's the yield? Minimal at this point. Occasional glimmer, but it's weak. What do you think? Stay the course? No, ma'am. Juice ain't worth the squeeze. Well, okay then. Let's call this one tapped. Why don't you move over to that big thing we looked at? Yes, ma'am. Dusty, you're up. Grab a cutter and mine what you can. Metal deposits are in that cavern. I'll shout out when I need you.
Alright, well, we're Come off on. this rock. It's time. You're with me. Another job. Come on. We're getting close, I think. Yeah, everything is just all in, seriously. Uh, there's something really effed up about this. Where is it, Hella? Through there, I think. Okay, you. You're up. Something goes wrong in there. We'll come get you. Uh, why would anything go wrong? Should would we... you shut up? Both of you do your jobs. Client is on his way. Hey, don't look at me. I've done my part. Um, still getting weird gravity readings. I, I guess that's a good thing. Just keep going. Come on. Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? real rags to riches to rag story when you signed on from space industrialist to contract miner <laughs> well you got the sample clients on his way then we all get paid do you remember anything that happened huh well makes the paperwork easier and we got what we were looking for all this trouble for that stupid thing? Huh. Sure don't look like much. Never mind what it looks like. It's worth more than this mine has pulled in all month. We'll be... Speak of the devil. Our constellation contact is on approach. Wait. Explorers group? Not a joke. 
You're just too young to know better. Hey, I'm just saying they got a reputation. Hell, I bet half the crew here doesn't even believe they really exist. Half the crew doesn't believe Earth exists, but it's still there. Same with Constellation. Yeah, come on. Exploring space? <laughs> Who does that anymore? Ain't the space we've already got complicated enough? Not to them, apparently. All right, Dusty. Airlock. Put your helmet on. long time <laughs> <laughs> yes it has that mine on bendy right kazal hellhole like this place rare mineral contract your tastes are a bit more sophisticated now huh so you found something right here the new guy found it that right and everything went cool just like grabbing those Minerals on Bendy? Kazal. And no Barrett. Not cool. He passed out after the extraction. Doesn't even remember what happened. Is that right, cowboy? Went on a trip, huh? Well, you could say that the infinite possibilities of the universe are full of everything but coincidences. Ha! <laughs> That fun, huh? Not the most gentle push into the great mysteries of space, but hey, been there. Look, just hand over the credits, and I'll be happy to never see this thing, or you, ever again. That's why I like you, Lynn. All business. Barrett, the scanners on the frontier are reporting a ship coming in hot from orbit. I really thought I'd lost them. Barrett?
That was some fine work on the pressure. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. You ever stare up at the stars at night wondering what's out there? Well, that's us. That's where we go. Hey, um... I wasn't gonna bring it up, but we don't exactly know what the artifact might have done to your head, and Constellation is really the only group qualified to help. Oh, no, Barrett. No. You think you're just going to take off after the mess you caused? Oh, right. I guess I did just put you all on the Crimson Fleet hit list. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, I, I know, I know, but he's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as he touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. Now that we've been attacked, oh, we've got to pack up and move on. Argos will come for the rest of us. You get going. Just go. Before I say something, I regret. Well, none of that's settled. Vasco, get him to the lodge. No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo? Again? Very well. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. Hey, look at that. The watch fits you perfectly. Now, questions? Come on. You really not at all? Curious about that light music show you experienced? Why it only affected you? Because if you didn't notice, we've all been handling it since with no problem. The way I see it, Constellation needs that artifact, but they also need you. This mystery is only getting bigger each step we take. And you're part of it now. Technically, it's not even mine. Consider it alone. Vasco will keep you on course. Besides, I'm making an exception, since you can tell Constellation about that vision you had. See, that's the problem with the settled systems. Too easy to take everything for granted. While everyone else is busy playing politics, we're the ones braving the unknown, charting the vastness of space. Without us, the galaxy is just a big room with the lights turned out. That, my friend, is the million credit question. And Constellation can find the answer. With your help. They're just following the loop, like pirates do. And I have something of a reputation as a loot collector. And Vasco, don't let him break my ship. up the ramp, Captain. I'll be in the external robotics bay. It appears you are the new captain of the frontier. Captain, I assume you know how to fly a Class A starship. As Barrett likes to say, it's as easy as learning to ride a bike. I will attempt to boost the shields, just in case there are any difficulties. Shields ready. The rest is up to you.
that we are in orbit, it might be wise to test all controls and systems to ensure they are not on the verge of catastrophic failure. I can step you through the entire process, or if you're already an experienced pilot, just power up all the systems and we'll be on our way. Ships are 
to our location, Captain. Protocol Indigo dictates that I am to return to the Lodge with no deviations. We are here to stop the Crimson Fleet from pursuit. Nothing more. I have often asked Barrett that same question at various times and about various individuals that wanted to cause us harm. The most likely answer is that Barrett personally insulted him typically by continuing to live, usually after escaping from certain death, and often with an object multiple people wanted.
constellation is an explorer's society founded over 50 years ago with the mission of seeking out the unknown. Members often engage in expeditions in small groups, typically one or two people, or like Barrett and myself, one person and one robot. The membership is intentionally limited and small. Should you join Constellation yourself, you will be the 10th active member. Barrett would say that billions of years ago, we were all one with the cosmos, so technically you have known each other forever. But the more practical answer is likely that he needs you. The number of known people who have been affected by the artifacts is now two. Without your investment in Constellation's mission, he may never know more about the experience you both share, so he is showing you trust in order to gain your support. Careful, Captain. Alien creatures are often unpredictable. Enemy detected in the immediate vicinity.
while I am programmed for combat. Carrying objects is one of my simplest and most useful protocols.
Captain, Protocol, am I currently in possession of an item you require?
fucking sets up on the roof. I'm on it. You got a jet wish?
tried to sync with the neural control interface, it just completely flipped out. Broke through its containment chamber like it was made out of paper. It killed Michelson, Cobb, and Sumatri in all of one minute. I'm, I'm not even sure where it is now. It took off deeper into the facility. A, a security detail went in after it, but good friggin' luck! When I know it's safe, I'm going to make a run for the comm relay. Try to call in the cavalry. This is Hayden Wynn, lead xenobiologist. Wishing he had gone to dentist school like his parents wanted. I'm detecting a safe nearby. We could make use of whatever is inside, provided you had some digi-picks and a disregard for personal property rights. While I am programmed for, may I take some things?
kidding me? The Frontier has a new captain? You working with Barrett, or did you pry the ship keys out of his cold, dead hands? Oh no, you see, we weren't really after Barrett. We're after that ship. Every Crimson Fleet rook hears about the Frontier. That constellation keeps treasure hidden in the cargo bays. The loot from a hundred planets. That statement is partially correct. The Frontier has been to many planets and moons. But the only things held in the cargo bays are spare parts, dust, desiccated food particles, and a variety of species of ant. I don't care what kind of lies Barrett programmed that robot to say. We're taking that ship. You're not talking us out of this score. So you got past a few rooks. Who cares? Bullshit. I'm not falling for that. Your ship is loaded, and we want it. I've heard enough out of you. Kill them! Spirit and the Crimson Fleet have something of a history. They always assume he is a treasure hunter. our deaths over your own survival. Now be free to travel to Constellation's headquarters without Crimson Fleet interference. That's smart. jump to the planet Jemison in the Alpha Centauri system, and then land in the city of New Atlantis. Do not worry, this will all become second nature before too long.
Frontier, this is United Colony Security. Maintain course and prepare to be scanned. Scan complete. No contraband detected. You are cleared for landing at New Atlantis. Let me guess. Protocol Indigo again? And here's our new captain. My crew can take a look at your ship. And you can stop by the Trade Authority kiosk if you need to offload some cargo. I would try to viewport. It'll be on your left once you get into the plaza. The Trade Authority runs a vending kiosk next to my booth. It's just off to the side, near the ramp. Besides that, Jemison Mercantile is your closest shop if you're looking for a bit of everything. That's further in, past the security checkpoint. I'm sure you can find something you like. Everything looks good here. I'll be at my booth if you need me. This is New Atlantis Transit, or The Net. It provides free transportation throughout the city. We can take it directly to the Mast District. aesthetically pleasing, or so Barrett has told me. New Atlantis relies on advanced hydroelectrics for most of its power. We just need to convince her that President Abeyo isn't the same as her predecessors, and that an Andrews Barrett will use things as being a good house.
bartender at the viewport would stop complaining to security. I don't know what she lost, but she won't get it back by a... We may be us. in a United Colonies city, but Constellation is an entirely neutral entity, and always has been. Just one quiet day, but too much to ask for. Here we are, the Lodge. The front door should unlock if you hold up the watch that Barrett gave you. I have messaged the other members of Constellation. They will be waiting for us inside. Captain, everyone will be in the library, just inside. If Barrett were here, he'd probably tell you that you're part of something bigger now, and he hopes you'll make this place your home. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? I see. Vasco, verify. All statements made have been factual. Uh, this is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. He's here with the artifact. Thank you, Matteo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? We think it's anyone else who pulls one out of the rock for the first time. Why? We're not sure yet. So if you wouldn't mind adding another data point. Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. There, are you hearing this? Do you all believe me now? Whether it happened or not, what's been down? If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? But gentlemen, can we please focus? Noel, I think it's time we tested your theory. Right, let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have... The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. That's it. Just like the others. And to imagine, we thought there were only two of them at first. Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the subtle systems can do that. None of them. This proves that... Easy, girl. Breathe. You'll have a heart attack. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, that means there's a set. Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wager? You're on, Walter. Well, if we had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting, now would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend here? <laughs> so, are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? Individually, they're just odd hunks of metal. Another oddity from the uncharted reaches of space. As to what they are, what they're building, well, 
You'll be part of solving that puzzle now. We're all here because we're committed to exploring space. Humanity may have settled the stars, but that doesn't mean we should stop diving into the unknown. Beyond that, you'll be expected to use your own judgment, just like the rest of us. You should take some time to get settled in. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some of our members aren't here, but you'll meet them soon. Come find me when you're ready. You and I are going to be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. And here, I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. In addition to credits, why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability? Hmm? You'll need it out in the field anyway. Just mind your head. Can I help? So, are you ready to get to work? Or was there something else? I don't know what you've heard, but I can imagine. First of all, I think you can dismiss any stories about us no longer existing. Hmm? I don't believe in smearing our name everywhere we can. Exploring the universe, charting the unknown, that's what counts. Besides, having a little mystery gives us room to maneuver. A fixed reputation could fence us in a lot of ways. Not much, but you've seen them for yourself. It doesn't take a lot to realize we're dealing with something extraordinary. Just what that is, we'll have to figure out. It's what we do. We're explorers. Humanity has always hunted for knowledge in the unknown. We just take that a little more seriously than others. We were founded decades ago by a man named Sebastian Banks. He wanted a small group of people from all corners of the settled systems dedicated to the biggest question of all. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. Another great secret the universe is asking us to unravel. I understand. You've been through a lot. Just let me know when. We've always considered ourselves explorers, but this really is uncharted territory, isn't it? That was intense, wasn't it? The artifacts, I mean. Sorry, this must all be a little overwhelming for you right now. I guess a lot overwhelming, now that I think about it. I'm Noelle. It's really nice to meet you. And thank you for bringing the artifact to us. Oh, gosh. No, I mean, that's, that's flattering. But really, we're making this up as we go. Until you arrived, we only had the two. And the vaguest sense that there was something more at work. There's still so much we don't know, and that means a lot of work ahead of us. Of course, there's plenty of planets out there that no one has ever set foot on, and everything we learn about them is valuable. We have a board where we post anything specific we're looking for. A type of alien flora or fauna, or a planet with a specific quality, like if it's primed to have life but doesn't yet. Oh, right, that. If we're approaching this rationally, I suppose we'd call them visual and auditory hallucinations. What you perceived as lights and music could be overloaded neural input, your brain's attempt to make sense of something, an energy surge, some other phenomenon. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of people report in these situations. I'm not saying you didn't really see anything, just that it's really hard to determine after the fact. That's okay. Now that this has happened to both you and Barrett, we can know to maybe expect it in the future. Be a little more prepared. 
We're all in this together now, right? Well, Constellation's been around forever, more than 50 years now, but we only became aware of the artifacts recently. Barrett discovered the first one about two years ago, right under our noses, and he was the one who got this all in motion. It's a shame he isn't here to see this. Well, right now, nothing's off the table. Metallurgical analysis, chemical composition, I'm looking at everything. One thing I'm really trying to improve is my overall database of xenobiology. I don't know if it will help in this case, but the more we know about, well, everything, the better off we are, right? Speaking of, if you're gonna be out there looking for more artifacts, you're bound to come across some interesting specimens. Anything organic, I'd be happy to take it off your hands. I can't be certain that they will, but more data points are always a good thing. I don't want to rule out anything that could provide a breakthrough. And if it sweetens the deal, I can pay. Pretty well, too. Walter's pockets may not be bottomless, but they are pretty deep. Planning on sticking around then? Good. I think we can find a spot for you. And along the way, I can give you the very abbreviated tour. I hope you're still glad you joined Constellation, Noel. It's a dream come true, Sarah. You know that. You've been an invaluable asset to the group, Noel. Just wanted to make sure you didn't regret it. It's not always easy, but I just remind myself that if it weren't for you and for Constellation, I'd have no idea that any of this was going on. Lately, I find myself spending more and more time here. Business has appealed to me, but this is exciting. Well, I suppose calling you a rock breaker may have been a bit out of line. Still doesn't excuse it. My frustrations lie more with Barrett. Not the first time his shenanigans have jeopardized one of our ventures. Not fair of me to take it out on you, especially since it would seem he made the right call this time. So, let's start over, shall we? Walter Stroud, CEO of Stroud Eklund, member of Constellation, and off times grumpy old man. Welcome aboard. Yes, well, a stocked bar is a treat I think Constellation can afford. For now. But if you clean us out, you're on your own. By the way, in addition to a place to stay, the Lodge has a wealth of modification and research equipment. Spacesuit customization, pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing alien substances, the whole thing. You can even fashion industrial pieces for large-scale projects, if you don't mind extracting a few raw resources from a nearby planet, that is. I'm a fan of self-reliance. So I encourage you to make use of the tools we have to build what you need. Me? <laughs> Why, I'm the wallet. Someone has to fund all this, and all my success in business doesn't mean much if I can't put it to good use. I don't pretend to have the daring of Ms. Morgan or the smarts of young Mateo, but... I can make sure that they have the resources they need. And, as you've now seen, those resources aren't being wasted. We're onto something big here. Up until very recently, I'd likely have dismissed it as, I don't know, hallucinations. But now, I'm not sure what to think. I don't suppose you have a history of this sort of thing, do you? This, or anything else. You'll have to forgive me. I don't know you as well as the others here. If you weren't so new to the group, I might already know the answer. Yes, I imagined as much. Barrett expressed something similar in his own unique way. 
I'm no scientist. I leave that to the likes of Barrett and young Noel there. But I think we can all agree there's something unusual going on here. Frankly, this is the most exciting thing that's happened in years. We're most well known for ship manufacture. No expense spared. If you want the best and can afford it, you choose Stroud Eklund. Unfortunately, our success means you'll sometimes see Stroud Eklund ship modules on less than reputable vessels. They covet them. The bastards. I've tried to convince the United Colonies we can help in that regard, but they're married to Deimos Star Yards, and those old salts are stuck in the glory days. Funny thing about companies, you build one sturdy enough, it doesn't need you there all the time to prop it up. Stroud Eklund functions quite well on a day-to-day -day basis, leaving me time to devote to more esoteric pursuits. For years, I was captivated by the writings of Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks. I finally decided to do something more than admire from a distance, and so now I call the Lodge home as much as anywhere else. Goodbye. Bet you never expected to end up you involved in something like this. Question, Walter? You don't see Are you this, doing okay? I'm not sure anyone really asked yet. Don't want you to think we're focused on the artifacts and nothing else. You matter too. You've done something really significant bringing that artifact here. I'm Mateo, theological scholar by trade, but now, well, an explorer like you. It's really good to have you with us. Wow. All right. Second one was on Kazal, buried the same as the one you found. But the first one, right under our noses for years, sitting in storage, masquerading as an oversized paperweight. Can you imagine potentially the greatest discovery in human history collecting dust? I'm not gonna lie, I really wish I could have seen this for myself. It's hard to judge otherwise. Both you and Barrett saw something. I don't think that's a coincidence. Did it feel like it was trying to tell you something? I don't want to necessarily use the words divine revelation, but you know, if the label fits. It has to be, right? All of this is connected. We just need to figure out how and why. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. We just need more data, which means more artifacts. Well, there was some overlap in interests. I'd spent years searching for religious relics from human history. I had made a really incredible discovery, only to lose it to a greedy corporation. So I tried to steal it back. In the process, I met Walter. Turned out he owned the corporation. After a long talk, we realized we had a lot in common, and I was invited to join Constellation. Take care of yourself. Sarah is the best possible person to be running Constellation at a time like this. Focused, no nonsense, and dedicated. Hey, have you been up to the eye recently? Haven't gone up there recently. Is everything okay? Oh, I just don't know how he does it. Up there all alone for so long. Some people love that kind of space. Pun intended. What can I help you with? Whenever you're up for it, we have work to do. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually, but a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising. Jumping to anthropology on me already. Oh, well, good. We all need our own reasons to be out there. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself. 
and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. You mean, besides the ship, the robot, and a place to stay all rent-free? We do have some funds we can disperse from time to time. Not to mention, I think we can get you a proper suit. We're explorers. We keep a lot of equipment on hand for that purpose. So the more you work with us, the more we can share what we have. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen. Whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? I mean, Constellation has a roster of members who haven't always been on the right side of their respective society. We're risk takers. Some of us have seen the inside of a jail cell more than once. If you join us, it means you're committed to our mission. In exchange, we give you latitude in your choice of means. Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis, shall we? I am at your service, Captain. these jetpacks for a reason, you know. newest member. Thought I'd run through some legwork together. Oh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies, earn some credits, even get your UC citizenship? United Colonies volunteer fleet. Independent captains enlist, get to use their own ships, and the UC provides them with sustained work and credits. And put in your time and you're guaranteed UC citizenship and everything that comes with it. Discounts on UC goods and medical services, chance to own a place in New Atlantis. Only way a foreign captain could even dream of seeing those sorts of benefits. So, you want in? Excellent, just need to do a little paperwork. An orientation on the UC, a knockout on an exam, and a probationary mission. We need to know you'll be able to hack it out there after all. Do well. You'll be out there keeping the peace in no time. Don't forget, John. I need him back after you wrap him in that fancy get-up of yours. No worry, Sarah. I'm not forgetting about you or our little business afterwards. Promise. First things first. Head down to the orientation hall and get signed up at the registration terminal. System will walk you through the rest. Oh, and if you got a bounty, well, you're gonna have to make things right with the UC before we'll let you join. But if you've got any questions, I can get you sorted. What can I do for you, applicant? Right. Got so wound up bringing you on board, I almost forgot. No, <laughs> I haven't. 
Come on, John. Let's hear it before you try to convince him to join the Marines. All right. Here's what I've got. Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you know. The Sol system? Which admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Matches that description Sarah gave me. Oh, he goes way back. I think he was recruit number 81 or something. You kidding? Lowest posting request rate in the whole fleet. Only thing there the UC cares about is Mars. And no one wants to go to Mars. They want to get off Mars. What? <laughs> no. Nah. Soul system is as quiet as a coffin. It'll be fine. That means it's not going to be fine. I'm sure you two can handle it. Soul system is a lot of planets, but a vet like Moera will be checking in at Sidonia on the regular. You mean hitting the bars, don't you, John? Hey, nothing wrong with a little refresh between patrols. Yeah, bring a coloring book. You get so used to seeing red, you'll forget what blues and greens look like. You'll have to ask him, but Vanguard volunteers have retrieval rights if they get into a scrap. Wouldn't be surprised if he found it off of a pirate or something like that. It's definitely a lifestyle, burning helium out there, seeing where the stars take you. to get this ship moving.
Sidonia. Ah, I cherish these visits to the forgotten corners of the United Colonies. Servant drinks here for over 40 years. Few places can offer that kind of stability. We get a lot of new faces passing through here. Plenty. But if I went blabbing them to any rando that walks into my bar, no one would ever tell me anything around here. You don't do this job for 45 years by losing your customer's trust. You don't guess. You know that. And you better know it if you want to keep drinking in my bar. Everything. I make it a point not to sell crap. We got beer, wine, and spirits. We don't do too many fancy mixed drinks, at least not the kind you get in Neon or New Atlantis. It's my belief that the only booze worth drinking doesn't need to be mixed with something else to taste good. He ain't been around. Went off on patrol, hasn't been back in since. We're starting to think it might be time to pour one out to the Blackest Sea. You in the service? I know the feeling, but uh, you just get so used to losing people. Look, nothing more I'd love than to help out a fellow Martian, especially one that's missing. But, <clears throat> He has a tab, and you don't know if he's coming back. It's a lot of credits, okay? I let it slide for a long time because he's a regular, but... If I'm out all that money, I got problems. What do you say? Come on. Life on Sidonia ain't hard enough. You gonna guilt trip me? Of 
course I do. It's just... Uh, all right, I give up. Just trying to earn a living here. Last time he was here, Moera kept yelling about the Lady of Love. <laughs> Singing songs. All that kind of thing. Venus? That's only one planet. Hardly an entire patrol route. I got what I got, okay? Oh, fine. We'll make do. Footsteps at each. 
jumped from the soul system out into the beyond and touched your magnificence. That he learned the truth of the shrouding, the coming eternal embrace. That you will reward the promised and cast the accursed into shadow. Steps in, and we're already looking at a corpse. Okay, 
It's not Vanguard Moara. Looks like spacers were scavenging around here and someone else came in and said hello. Oh, this won't be your last encounter with a spacer crew. They pillage abandoned facilities and shoot anyone who gets in their way. They're even less organized than the Crimson Fleet. Just countless desperate groups scavenging and killing to survive. Stock up on junk. Bring it. Breathe,
another request to get the fleet out here to deal with these spacers. But until then, if any of you thugs are listening, I'm the damn ghost stealing your stuff in the night. Clear out while you have the chance. He's almost daring the spacers to come after him. It's actually not a bad plan. Much better odds destroying one of their ships than fighting them all at once in <laughs> In frosty temperatures like this, there's nothing better than a flask of a good English whiskey to keep you warm. Ah, oh, 
Am I glad to meet whoever you two are? Looks like we're all in one piece. Any day you walk away from, right? What? You guys still exist? Man, I've only heard stories. We've heard stories too, about a strange object you found on patrol. So, you know what that thing is. I tried to hawk it in Sidonia, and the guy thought I was peddling phony titanium. Mm, it doesn't play nice with scanners. It'd be worthless to someone trying to flip rare minerals quickly. So you're saying I shouldn't be using it as a hood ornament? Oh, that. Yeah, I mean, it's been a mess lately. Spacers, maroon zealots, plus Ecliptic tracking me down. We ran into a few members of Ecliptic at the Nova Galactic Star Yard. I'm guessing they were after you. Ah, damn. That's probably how they found me. I knew taunting the Spacers to meet me at Neptune was a long shot. Making rookie mistakes. I've been chasing shadows around the Sol system for years. And every time I go back to Mars... Sidonia is waiting for you. Run down. Forgotten. Feels like everyone's given up, you know? I've just been spending more and more time in the star field. Sometimes I wonder if I'm really going back. Yeah? You know, that's actually kind of tempting. I'd have to settle some things back on Sidonia. Maybe hit me up there later. If you don't mind, we came here for something. That strange object you found? Right. Hey, it's yours. Appreciate the rescue. Hope you figure out whatever that thing is. Let's grab the artifact. Good work. Let's get back to the lodge. I hope you are satisfied <laughs> with it. the quarters available Go to ahead. you. Do the honors. It fits. Energy spiked a bit, but it's restabilized. Is there anything new showing up? No, it's the same as before. There's a massive output as the artifact is added, then it harmonizes. But it's waiting for the others. Hmm, that's speculation, but I think you're right. We need more. Here. You've earned this. Welcome to Constellation. As a full member this time. Honestly, this just makes it more official. Call it right person, right place, right time. But once the artifacts started coming together, you were one of us. We're going to do great things together. All of us. By the way, how would you like to keep traveling together? I'm not sitting behind my desk for this. These artifacts are a new chapter for Constellation, and I'm going to be out there for it. And I want you out there as well. You got results. <laughs> I need someone like you watching my back. Oh, we'll be working with everyone here at the Lodge sooner or later. Constellation is all in on this. Sometimes we'll partner up, sometimes we'll go solo. It's not a formal arrangement. We just came back with good news. We've got momentum. Why not keep going? All right. We've got a few more leads we should talk about. First, there's an expedition that Samco has been putting together. It's in Free Star Collective Space, and he knows it inside and out. There's also the Eye, our star station in orbit. About time for you to meet Vladimir. He's been hard at work tracking down more anomalies. And last but not least, Noel. Have we heard anything from Barrett yet? A courier from Argos Extractors came by to let us know they're packing up the operation on Vectera. But that's it, no other word. Mm, that's not good. 
We should get over there and check on Barrett in person. Oh, that's right. He wasn't here when you first showed up. He should be back by now. I'll let him handle the introductions. If I steal his thunder, I'll never hear the end of it. His mind is always somewhere, but there's no arguing his knack for being in the right place at the wrong time. Oh, too bad he couldn't see the artifacts coming together. But knowing him, he'll be so excited when he gets a look, it won't occur to him that he's missed anything. We maintain a star station in orbit above us. It's where we do all our deep space scanning. Vladimir runs the station. Brilliant astronomer. Years of practical experience. It's all important, but if you want a direction, I'd grab Barrett first. He's not just an old friend. He's been all over the settled systems. So long. Well, you're back. Oh, we'll get to what happened to Barrett. Oh, no. Don't start. I've had enough Barrett for one lifetime. I don't need the sequel showing up on my doorstep. More pirates showed up when you were gone. We weren't as lucky this time. Calvert. Troy. Some of the new Dusties. They didn't make it. You're right. You tell yourself you got deadlines, that the credits are what matter. But it's people doing the job, not machines. You think if you're strict with them that they'll focus on the work, give you a little distance if things go wrong. But you want them to win. Every boss does. Anyway, I was pinned down behind some crates with Barrett. Bullets and laser fire everywhere. No smile on that damn carefree face of his. Like he knew this was it. I started stealing myself to go out fighting. Then that idiot puts his hand on my shoulder and says, Stay here, Lin. I got you. Not quite. Barrett is more dangerous than you might think. Next thing I know, two of the pirates are dead, and he's got the third one in a headlock. Drags him out into the open at gunpoint and demands to talk, or else I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law on this guy's temporal lobe. And that's when they brought out Hella. <sighs> I didn't overhear everything, but after the ten longest seconds of my life, Barrett put his hands up, and both of them ended up getting taken aboard the pirate ship. And that's the last I saw of either of them. They could have grav jumped anywhere. I tried pinging a transmission to the ship in the comms building before they left, but the pirates must have fried it. You want to try it? Go ahead. But the odds of them being alive, even if you could find them... <sighs> I've lost a lot of people on this run, Dusty. I just want to pack up.
to make out the grab jump calculations before we're out of range. Out of range of what? Out of range of the sensor array on Vectera. Would you keep up? Once we're outside the star system, the bandwidth goes from instant speed to effectively never. What good is sending a transmission down there? You gonna tell Lynn how royally screwed we both are? She doesn't even have a ship. You underestimate how many of my admirers there are in the galaxy, Heller. One of them is bound to show up. Looking to reunite with this handsome face. We're doomed. Capital D, doomed. Got it, okay. Whoever finds this, I'm attaching the interstellar coordinates to the metadata on the transmission. Rescue us. Repeat. Rescue us. So, you actually get that computer working again? What? Let me see that. <laughs> Funny. Even knowing he's alive, I still never want to see him again. Hella, on the other hand... Okay. Let me send you the location data embedded in the transmission. Find them, okay? Well, don't start buying me stuffed animals for my birthday or anything. But yes, all right. I don't like seeing my people hurt. Even Barrett and Hella. Just get after them, okay? And hey, if you ever need a little extra help, I've been thinking about a career change lately. Maybe it's time to put Argos behind me. Seems like you've been keeping busy, Dusty. If, uh, you find yourself in need of a capable traveling companion, we should talk. My contract's up with Argos, and I could use a change of scenery. Sure. I don't mind taking orders from a former employee. It can't be worse than working for Barrett. Works for me. I'm not fussy about assignments. I'll go where I'm needed. Right. I'll get to work. Let's catch up later.
it's you. And here I thought you were some pirate coming back to kill me. Lucky me, right? Nah. Nah, I'll, I'll be all right. Just, you know, wasn't trying to move around too much with all the painkillers and nausea meds running through me. You should let us help you. There's no reason for you to have to suffer needlessly. Man, I was so terrified when I got pulled on board that pirate ship. There it was all. Sorry, brother. I'll get us out of this. Trust me. Mm, not... <laughs> What you and I would call a plan, necessarily. Oh, I'm getting to that. He tells me we need to start pretending to fight each other. <laughs> Trick the pirates into thinking they need to come in before one of us gets killed. I just remember him shouting, This kid is a killer. How am I supposed to defend myself? Against these pearly whites, he's gonna bite my face off. I mean, I didn't think it would work, but they came in. All of a sudden, we were wrestling with two of them. Barrett reached for one of their guns. Bingo. Blasted the pilot right in the back. <laughs> Through to the flight console dropped orbit like a rock off a high rise I blacked out and when I came to there he was smiling like it was just another day on the job you missed the fun part Heller I mean I go through all the trouble of saving your butt and you weren't even awake to notice then, he did the little finger gun thing. Oh, yeah. Probably should have talked about that first. <laughs> did I mention I'm on a lot of painkillers? So, I was real excited when a ship showed up. <laughs> then... Less excited when I realized it was a Crimson Fleet ship. And then, really, really less excited when Barrett said, It's okay, I got this. He mumbled something to him, and then they were all gone. I was drifting in and out. But, uh, I think I heard the word ransom. I was drifting in and out, but, yeah, I think so. Got a signal from the ship before they grav jumped. Guessing it was Barrett. <laughs> Haven't really been in a good <clears throat> space to have a listen. <laughs> Here you go. Hey, uh, uh, I should come with you, right? I don't think anyone else is coming. Yeah, just, uh, don't ask me to operate any heavy machinery for a while. Uh, give me a minute. I think the worst of it is... Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Ready to wisecrack with the best of them. Let me know when you want to head out. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. You bet. I've worked on enough remote outposts that I know a thing or two about optimizing them for material production. 
And if you're in the market for a mining buddy, I'm your guy. Phew, oh, I'm glad to hear you say that. For a second there, I thought you were gonna leave me behind. What's on the agenda today? Got it. Catch you on the flip side, boss. Thanks for letting me tag along. You've given the fleet a lot of trouble, Barrett. Hey, since when is surviving being attacked causing trouble? Isn't that just fighting back? Hey, pilot, could you move your arm a little bit to the left? I can't make out the console. Don't move. He's trying to figure out our destination, probably transmitting this conversation right now while we're still in orbit. Well, yeah, thought I was making that pretty obvious. Okay, okay, put the gun down. I'm done. See? My retinas are pointing away from the console towards this lovely view of space we have out the window. Tie him up. Once we get back to the base, the fun starts.
certainty to the universe at all. Once you really start getting out there, the rules of physics kind of turn into suggestions. You're pulling my leg again, right? Just a bit. No exaggerations this time. Hmm. Same. Unicorn. Not kidding. What? The mythical mare with the magic horn thing? Come on. Was King Arthur riding on it too? But my point still stands. You need an open mind out there. You go into the far reaches of space too tightly wound. Your brain is just gonna pop like a sucker. Reports have come in while we were away. I hope you are satisfied with the quarters available to you. Barrett, we were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign. Start, Conch. Wait, is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library shelf. Now look at them all. You feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, I had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I I'm still not a hundred percent, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around, help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe? <laughs> Marvelous. You must be the latest poor fool to get dragged into our dysfunctional little family. 
Whoa. I know a few dark sides of the Aquila moons, but if you're looking for deep history lessons, well, I'm gonna fall asleep before you do. Trust me. Don't encourage him. Koriko, by the way. Hi, hi. It helps to have a good teacher. Dad, don't let it go to your head. Sam? <laughs> Not let it go to his head? <laughs> Impossible. A compliment from little Cora. It's not even my birthday. Now, let's talk business. Sarah tell you about the expedition? Sure enough, that's where we're heading. The three of us are heading to Aquila, for a settled planet of the Free Star Collective and, not coincidentally, the home of their capital, Aquila City. We'll land in the city's spaceports, but the frontier is our goal. It's a rough country. Spawned a lot of stories. And I got a lead on a tale that um, makes me think one thing. Artifact. Yeah, don't piss off the Free Star Rangers. As far as the Collective is concerned, they're judge, jury, and executioner. They're the good guys, but that don't make them any less dangerous. Outside that, just don't be an asshole. Okay, we'll meet you on board your ship. Talk more when we get there. Once we land on Aquila, it's gonna be you and me. So if you want to do any freewheeling before then, Cora and I will just be riding passenger. Time to park this boat. would be a quaint world to retire on, if the damn wildlife wasn't so hostile. All right, we're here. You ready? Because once we get started, I'm gonna be riding your tail till this is over. She stays with the ship, usually. Got a few more years to go before I let her swill whiskey in some backwater bar. There's uh, something you should know up front. I'm a co. As in Solomon Co, first man on Aquila. That tale I mentioned before, the one I think is connected to an artifact, it's something of a family legend. After planet fall, Solomon spent years mapping Aquila. And he found a tiny little patch of nothing on his sensors. The kind of nothing an artifact produces. He called it the empty nest. Said it was a place even the wildlife of Aquila wouldn't go. Yeah, and the Coers have been coasting on that for ten generations now. Solomon's always a larger-than-life figure if you read the histories, but if you just listen to a few recordings of the man, he was simple. Just wanted to keep moving forward. Because you'll find a whole lot of nothing. Gravitational anomalies are a little hard to pick up in an area with tons of starship traffic. Not to mention all the electronics from the city <clears throat> and security scramblers that the Free Star or smugglers on the frontier put down. Solomon's maps are locked up tight in the local gal bank. We'll be heading there. Hold it. By order of Marshal Daniel Blake, I need to inform you we've got some trouble at gal bank. Folks might be in danger, so you may want to steer clear. Never a dull moment around here. Well, I know you. You're Sam Co. Marshall will be damn glad to have another Free Star Ranger helping out. Afraid your information is a couple years out of date. Well, all I know is there was an attempted bank robbery and things went sideways. You'd have to ask the Marshall if you want the whole story. Not usually, but he took charge of the situation because the bank robbers are part of the Shaw Gang. The Marshal's had a lot of experience dealing with the gang, so he's calling the shots. 
It's just behind me on the right. The place is on lockdown, so you should steer clear unless you can help out. I guess that'd be the marshal's call. Frankly, it ain't going well. Looks to be a stalemate. Maybe a little outside help would do some good. Well, I doubt those robbers are gonna let us leisurely peruse the Galbank vault. We better see if we can help move the situation along. Everyone stays in front of the building, you Like who? Not you, but not one of your I have complete Stop confidence in the marshal. <sighs> what the hell am I supposed to do with that? He's... You need to stand back now. It's a hostage situation. Now please, get back, or I'll have the guards drag you away. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know you. Now, please, stand back. Aquila City at its finest, I see. Never a dull moment. Well, I'll be damned. Sam Cole. Been a long time. I won't hold my breath about you being here to take the badge again. Uh, listen, Sam, just so you know, I don't blame you for how it went down. For the others, though, you might get a different <laughs> perception. Thanks. I appreciate you saying so. Glad I figure some of that reception is owed. Still, I appreciate the sentiment, Marshal. It seems you got a situation. My friend here may be the answer you're looking for. All right, Sam. I'll trust your judgment on this one. Some folks from the Shaw Gang tried to rob the place, but they got spotted by a guard. They took everyone inside hostage, and now they're keeping a watch so we can't move against them. They're using the intercom to communicate. It's a big group that hides outside the city and runs smuggling jobs off-world. They take in all kinds, rookies and veterans alike. Judging by their lack of preparation, I'd say this particular group is green as hell. Probably their first attempt at heist. That should work in our favor. Right about now, they're probably wishing they'd just stayed home. They won't talk to me. Say they don't trust the badge. <laughs> they want a neutral negotiator. In other words, they didn't have a plan for this, so they're stalling while they come up with one. Without demands, I ain't got much to work with. About all we can do is wait and see. Hmm. All right, I'm willing to allow that. But a few things first. Say what you have to, but whatever they ask for, there's no way in hell I'm giving it to them. Also, there are lives at stake, so don't get cavalier. Find out what they want, and then report back to me. Take it slow and steady. Look for every opportunity to de-escalate. You got this. You in the bank. I'm <coughs> sending in a negotiator, so don't shoot. Hands I'm sure I things will you. turn out and just fine. The shark king is making fools of us. Those guys are scared, I can tell. Don't know exactly, but the bank ain't usually that busy. My guess is less than half a dozen in the Shaw crew and even fewer hostages. They're mainly smugglers. They bring in Aurora and other drugs from outside the city. Sometimes their new recruits have a few drinks and get a little anxious to prove themselves. My gut says those boys in the bank are just a, such a group. Guess we're done here. You're the negotiator, huh? If you think you're just gonna walk up here and get us to surrender, you're dead wrong.
ain't you polite. So tell me, stranger, how do I know you're gonna deal straight with us? <laughs> I don't know you, so why should your word mean anything to me? I... Uh, I see what you mean. You'd make a decent ranger with the way you handled that. They've got the marshal by the balls. Don't forget, there are lives at stake. What's the word? Well, I'll be a son of an Ashta. <laughs> How'd you pull that off? <coughs> Considering those are Shaw's people, that's damn near a miracle. Here, you've more than earned this. You got us out of a tough spot, and you did it with courage that's not common. As a matter of fact, you might just be Freestar Ranger material. If you're interested, head on over to The Rock and ask for Emma Wilcox. She handles the new recruits. All right. Let's get back in Galmax, see if we can get those maps. Shimon, baby. Marco! Are you all right? Seems like he built the whole damn free star connection. Solomon was from an earlier generation, so it's not going to be on the slate. Big bundles of paper is what we're after.
Jacob. Of course that old mule saw this coming. He's just a bitter old man, interfering in what's none of his business. There we do. <laughs> I was hoping to avoid the estate when we landed. Cora's gonna be so mad. We really gotta do this. That's a low blow there. No need to involve the little one. All right, fine. He's my dad, okay? We're not exactly on friendly terms. He probably figured I'd come for the maps at some point. Got ahead of me. Family business just wasn't something I wanted to get into, you know? Yeah, well, sorry I'm such a pain about it. No forgiveness between me and my old man. It's, uh... Co-tradition. All right, shall we? She's doing well for herself. Fredo is a big player in our manufacture. Saw your ship come in. Nice ride. finally decides to darken our doorstep again. You know why I'm here. Oh? What's that? You come to your senses? Realize where you ought to be for once? I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. Okay, this was a mistake. The only mistake I'm seeing here is you. Bringing your constellation lackey here instead of my granddaughter. Come to help Sam loot his ancestry? You're not getting those maps. Full stop. There's only one place a co ought to be. And it ain't out there in the star field doing Lord knows what. Putting our future at risk. Nothing's more important than family. Nothing. If Sam had stuck around, he'd know that. You wouldn't be here. All right, that's enough. Come on, let's you and I talk. In private. Hmm. Welcome home, Sam. Make your visit short, okay? It's what you do. Yeah, the way you handle things, not bad, not bad. Give me a sec. <sighs> All right, let's talk options. No, no, no. I mean, this is no place for her, okay? The less time she spends with Jacob, the better. I just... I made a decision a long time ago about how my little girl gets raised. And it doesn't include Jacob Cole, okay? Leave it at that. I'd appreciate that. You're flying in the face of my 30 plus years experience with the man, but all right. I hope you like arguing.
Sam's Constellation lackey here to bother me again? You mean besides the fact that you're some independent group that doesn't know where your loyalties lie? Or are you referring to the fact that my granddaughter lives in your clubhouse rather than in her family home? Well, that's not your decision, is it? It's co-property by birthright. It stays here. Not liking your attitude. I know all about your group's reputation. It's not what concerns me. <coughs> Can't believe I'm saying this. But if it'll get you out of my hair, then fine. You can have the maps. They're in the other room here. Key. Let's see if we can find the empty nest. All right, let me think. The way I heard it, the readings he was getting were normal at first, and then they bottomed out. And no creature, alien or otherwise, would dare step inside. There. Found it. Oh, boy. <sighs> That's a problem. First, it's in the middle of the frontier, which we already expected. No problems there, but the usual tussling with alien wildlife. But the empty nest is a cave right in the middle of Shawgang territory. Same outlaws who held up Galbank. Criminal groups in Aquila always find a way. But they usually have to keep on the move to avoid the Ashton. Well, it could just be a coincidence that the cave we want happens to be where the Shawgang runs around. But something doesn't feel right. Well, just remember, it's about the artifact, not them. Hurting bad guys puts a smile on your face, that's a bonus. Let's get to that cave. All right, this is Shawgang territory. And they're usually not willing to talk. Be ready.
swarming with ash. Take the goods. I think that's far enough. Hate to put a hole in the head of Akila's own prodigal son. At least not before we've had a word. You must be Shaw. What I am is disappointed. Samco in the flesh and he's peddling around the frontier with the has-beens of Constellation. Now you got past my crew, who I pay quite handsomely, I might add. Grabbed something from that weird cave. Probably whatever's been keeping the Ashter away. So, I'm down one hideout. Now, let's talk about what all that's worth to me. Your lives, your credits. One or the other, really. Oh, really? Let's hear it. You don't scare me. Not sure you can really back up all this tough talk. I'm not the one needs to be worried about that. Sick of trading words with you. Kill them! Shoot everything!
Not gonna be your day, pal. Do you have a new set of orders for me today? Is anyone hurt? You didn't let Cora handle the artifact, did you? We don't know what effects it might have on someone her age. Relax. We're fine. Go ahead. Time for that artifact to meet its siblings. Just... what are we building here? I haven't picked up any kind of frequency or signal coming from it. That doesn't mean much. This thing could be emitting something we can't even detect. As far as we know, we could be building a gigantic bomb that will blow up as soon as we finish it. Or maybe it's some kind of interstellar children's toy. Why would either of those things give the Discoverer visions and music? It's a message. I'm sure of it. We just have to hope that finding more of the pieces will give us some clue. I hear that. Moving forward sometimes means fumbling around in the dark. I think Cora and I can use some downtime, but you let me know if you ever want to team up again. Oh, and since it tends to come up, me and my Rugrat co-pilot work as a team. That's non-negotiable. If I'm coming with, that means Cora's on your ship. Hmm. Why not? What do you think, Cara? It's really nice to have more company. New stories, new data. What? Data? <laughs> All right. We're in. Let's see what the galaxy throws at us next. Have any new books for me? Books. I guess it is. Do you have more books, or can you buy me more books? With real pages, a spine, the whole package. My book allowance is all gone, and Dad won't get me more. So, books? Hey, uh, don't let her con you out of more credits. Her book allowance damn near bankrupted me. Dad, this is between us. I like books about quantum theory and astrophysics. Or science. Or horses. Did you know that it wasn't until after the Industrial Revolution that horse speed was the maximum civilization speed for centuries? All of society was built upon horses. Imagine what they must have looked like for real. They look smelly, in a good way. Oh, oh, oh. Dad, you've made the best friend ever. Well, now you've done it. Now you can get pestered about books nonstop. Yeah. A small price to pay for my education. Now, the important question. Pizza. Favorite topping? 
And please don't say cheese. Dad loves boring old cheese. Did you hear that, Dad? Meat! We have you outnumbered! We could always get one of each. No, you lose. <laughs> I have decided that I will stay. You have the Cora stamp of approval. I, uh, seem to have left my stamp back on Dad's ship. But imagine it there, on your arm. Cora approves! Ship is now docked. Perfect. Didn't even smudge the paint. Hey, what's going on? We got a rook on deck. Good to see Constellation getting some fresh blood. Former Crimson Fleet. An old Jackalbones would be the term for it, back in my day. Left that life behind me. Even before I signed up with Constellation, I was retired. Glad you two finally have a chance to meet. Wish I could have been down at the lodge to see the artifacts come together. But I got a little lost peeking through the eye. That one's all on me. The eye is the nickname for the star station. Think of it as one big telescope. Probably would have just gotten annoyed at being bothered. I'll catch a smile at our next big revelation. You know there's more to come. Now, this station, the Eye, rigged up for deep space scans. Barrett and Sarah teased out the signs of where our artifacts could be hiding after we caught our second one. But the data takes a slow ride along the Sea of Light. Years or decades between us and the fringes of space without a grav drive. No matter how good the scan, it's still just peeking at light, and she only has one speed. Ultimately, we're not looking at a planet. We're looking at the radiation coming off a planet, and that takes years to get here. Lot of interstellar bodies in the way, too. All that noise makes squaring the circle harder. Only going to be able to give you so many at once. You won't be the only constellation out there. Andresia and Matteo are both following up on scans themselves. Matteo went out recently, but Andresia... It's been a while. Hate to pull the worried old man act on you, but I'm an old man, and I'm worried. Another rook in Constellation who's making a name for herself likes to be on her own. I can relate, so I try to look out for her more than most. Yes, indeed. Stop worrying so much, Vladimir. If she's out there, we'll find her. She should be at one of the two sites I've marked on your star map. Can take care of herself, but we all need backup sometimes. Anyway, 
Hopefully you'll be catching Fortune's smile, and we'll have some more artifacts to take a closer look at. Happy hunting. Ever run the scholars on the Centaurus proclamation? The original treaty that gave every human the right to colonize the stars? Stolen by some fool's joke of a crimson fleet rook looking to trade names to captain. Sight to see pinned above my chair, like the whole settled systems was mine for the taking. Time dances its years forward, and I'd retired. That's when our own Sarah Morgan walks into the tale. Fire in her eyes and her head full of intel I thought I had spent the labor's efforts burying. Of course, I didn't have the Centaurus proclamation just lounging in my pockets. Belonged to the ship and her new captain in the fleet I had left behind. Tipped your ear long enough, but the short line of it, Sarah and I returned the treaty to the rightful owners, and I decided to hang around, lend an old pirate's wisdom to the mission. I make the visit when they need me. Don't mind the loner's life most days, and the eye is important work. But I should make the trip more often. Can't let Walter be the only one tending bar there too long. Everyone will forget what a good drink tastes like. That's why I missed your little welcome party. Got caught up plotting all the data the eye can give us. Wouldn't mind the helper's hand, though. Could speed the process along. Up-to-date planetary scans would help filter all the data I have to sift through. Maybe help to find the anomalous bits. And Constellation can slide a credit or two your way. All part of the mission of charting the stars, right? When you're orbiting a planet, your ship's scanners can pick up all sorts of information. Signs of life, resources, structures where they shouldn't be. It all gets downloaded into data you can hand over to anyone who's interested. And Constellation is always more interested than most. Then we're hand and hand in agreement. Now, get out there and burn some helium. Usually doesn't. I'm overdrawn from Lady Luck three times over. It's a long tale to tip your ear on, but if you ever wanted to visit, I have a house out there in the Starfield. Thought I was going to see life's eclipse from there, but... Constellation swept me away. Haven't been there since we started on the eye. If you do go there, turn the lights off when you leave, okay? I have something I need to discuss with you. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well, it got me thinking. So I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Uh, unfortunately no. Other than you and Barrett, there were no records of direct encounters with the artifacts. I have to admit though, I did get more than a bit sidetracked reminiscing about old times. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé.
Yeah, I thought so too. That's why I adopted her methods. You know, Aja and I logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. But it was the journey itself that I'll never forget. We catalogued unusual stellar phenomena, a few habitable worlds, and some unique life forms, but nothing SSNN would bother to report. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protege and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. I respected her, and I considered her a dear friend, but we weren't in love. Had that been true, I would have resigned my post and moved to Parima 2 instead of remaining at Constellation. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit and I could make proper introductions. Oh, don't worry. There's no bad blood between us. The worst that might happen is you get stuck listening to two old friends catching up on old times. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. I, I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I, 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 I have to go.
certain to put that to good use. This reminds me of a book I read as a child. It was about an expedition to the center of the Earth. One of my favorites. Don't come any closer. Identify yourself. I am fine. He was clumsy. Made far too much noise. Easy to deal with. You have not answered my question. Who are you? You are from Constellation. Vladimir said someone might be coming. I'm just glad we found you unharmed, Andresia. Vladimir and I were worried. You are the newest member, yes? Do they often send you to check up on other, more senior members? <laughs> I suppose. And yet you are here. Instead of checking up on Barrett or Noel, we waste time. We should complete our mission and then we can talk. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. Once again, we are triumphant.
What does your scanner reveal? Best not to leave anything useful behind. Big mistake. Ah! Oh, damn, I was just getting warmed up.
You're not walking out of here. This should be a more than adequate return for our efforts. did not respond when I called to you after you pulled out the artifact. Does that mean Barrett's theory and experience were correct? The artifact grants the first person who touches it a vision? The fact that it has happened to both you and Barrett is already more than we had before. I think it is important that we discuss what you saw back there. That 
man. What I had done. It was, yes. I appreciate that you see it that way. A very practical outlook, not one I find is shared amongst members of Constellation. May I ask what your background is? Argos. I have heard of this company. Small, reckless. Interesting. I do not have experience with this profession, but I have my own experiences with... risk. We both seem to be unusual additions to Constellation. Please, I would ask that you not mention to Vladimir the... the circumstances in which you found me. This is not the first time that Varun zealots have attempted to corner me. If it is known that this has happened again, well, it has been a while since I was given an assignment on my own. I would not want it to be even longer in the future. Do you understand? Yes, it would seem they have not yet learned how much it will cost them. But then that is their fundamental problem, is it not? An inability to see anything other than the path which they have created for themselves. You are unfamiliar. This is a surprise. Few have not heard of them. They are fanatics, having taken the teachings of House Varun and twisted them into a belief that the galaxy must be wiped clean before the Great Serpent's return. So... In this, I would say I have done the galaxy a favor. Mom, this means we are in agreement. Thank you. That is good to know. I will finish here and return to New Atlantis when I can. You should go now, as they will be expecting us.
I have been idle here for a long time. I believe Barrett would describe Was there concern that I would not contribute? Look at you two. I'm jealous. I tried following up on some leads myself, but came back empty-handed. They could be anywhere, can't they? Embedded in a rock? Or in the hands of an unsuspecting novelty goods trader? A couple of scans from the eye. But it looks like you got there first. Shame on me for taking the scenic route, huh? I catch myself just staring at the collection sometimes, wondering what it all means. Maybe that's how our ancestors felt when they were looking up at the stars for the first time. They didn't just gawk at the stars, Mateo. They explored, they tested. Science brought us to space, not daydreaming. I disagree. What's the point of science if not to enable humanity's dreams? And where do those dreams come from? Not every dream is a pleasant one. I agree with Noel. The work is what moves us forward. You're with me, right? Science or dreams? Which one is the true muse of space exploration? Neutrality in a debate? I guess your side forfeits. Uh, how can you forfeit if you don't even take a side? You're getting rusty with your comebacks, Mateo. Playing it safe, eh? <laughs> I don't blame you. Getting mired in a debate with Mateo and Noel can be an all-day affair. You know what? I just realized I completely overtook this whole conversation. This should be about you and Andresia celebrating a win for the group. I do not mind being asked to join in a debate. It was good to hear everyone's sides. But I do agree that we accomplished something together. Thank you for your help. I have no objections. Let us see what else we can find out there. Noel, pulling some interesting data from those new artifacts. Tell the Rook to meet me back on board the station. Thank you, but it was not necessary. We succeeded. Now that those artifacts aren't just blips of hope in the Blackest Sea, I found an interesting pattern. The grav anomaly generated by one of those artifacts? It matches one on another planet. A bigger one. This one has been in my list of possible artifact sites for a while, but the profile didn't quite match. Now that we've got more artifacts, the similarities are as clear as day. All right, let me transfer over the data, but I need you wearing caution's boots for this one. No telling what this thing is or why it's so large. Going to send you the mark close as I can, but I'm having trouble pinpointing the source. You'll need to explore the area on foot. Put your scanner to work. Don't know what you'll find. Keep your eyes open. No. Just need to follow your scanner to the real destination. Might be a boot's journey, but that's the explorer's lot sometimes. And from there, maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all. We're locked in and led.
laser scanner reveal.
Are you all right? We need to get you back to the lodge. Still getting used to this place. It does not quite feel like home, but hopefully someday. Crix's bones. Look at you. If you don't mind, I'm going to start doing some scans. Like, right now. We were right about the anomaly, weren't we? Tip our ears on the tail. Some kind of test? Were the artifacts meant to lead us there? Um, Vladimir, look at these readings. Cardiovascular and neurological levels aren't in the normal range. I think we're going to need a little demonstration. Mind putting the paces to it? Everyone saw that, right? Like a literal gift from the heavens. And also the most practical consequence of our little venture thus far. Got no old shipwise for this one. Going to just call weird, weird. So we have artifacts, a temple, and this power. All connected. But we do not understand the connections. 
We need additional information. Can we find more of them? Already picked one up from the scales. Matches another one of the artifacts we found. In theory, there might be one temple for each. But sifting through all the signs to identify a match is tricky. Impossible if we don't have the right artifact to compare. And even then, it takes time. It's a strong theory. Couldn't find that planetary anomaly without the data from the artifact. We'll need one to find the other. Don't think it's just Fortune's laugh that this temple responded to you. The artifacts, the visions, this power you've gotten... ...all seems to be the same song somehow. Plenty to think about. Anyway... Catch a smile out there. I'll work on finding planet anomalies that match the other artifacts we have. If you have a moment, I have something I'd like to discuss. I must admit, you've surprised me. I thought you were going to take off as soon as you'd gotten something from us. But I was wrong. I want you for a little soiree I'm planning. Of course. I will admit what I'm proposing involves a little more cloak and dagger than the usual business meeting. But we both know that's how the game plays sometimes. It's about an artifact, and our goal is simple. We're going to purchase it. Our seller is a freelance operative in the city of Neon, which means the artifact is almost certainly stolen from someone. I just need a little more presence in the negotiation to show we're serious. And I think you'd be perfect. Oh, exceedingly. The free market there is in full effect. Anything goes as long as you have the money. We'll be taking advantage of that. That settles it, then. We just need to make a few stops when we get to the city, and then the drinks will be on me. Drinks are on you? Hmm. Now I'm certain there's something wrong with you, Walter. It'll be easy, I promise. I'll ride passenger on your ship until we get to Neon. Just let me know when you're ready to set off. To the Volai star system, then. I admit I'm a little excited. And the site is clear. Let's hit down. See that shroud covering me on? Believe it or not, you're looking at the only city in the settled systems that powers itself from lightning. Meh. Smell that? Construction, incense, industrial chemicals of every kind. But they still can't get rid of the odor of chasm mass. We need to stop by the Stroud Eklund offices. There are certain authorization procedures when large funds are being transferred, even for something like this.
Looks like some sort of checkpoint ahead. It's probably designed. See that shroud covering me on? Believe it or not, you're looking at the only city in the settled systems that powers itself from lightning. Cut the act. The snippers picked up the Aurora you're carrying the second you step foot. All right, get up slowly and turn around. Try to run and we open fire. James Newell better watch his back. He's causing problems. If Benjamin Bayou's ego was as combustible as Helium-3, he'd be able to provide enough fuel to power every ship in the settled systems. You didn't hear this from me. I've heard that Benjamin Bayou has a private penthouse at the top of the tower. Hmm, the view from up there must be breathtaking. Stroud Eklund makes some of the finest ships in the settled systems. I'd love to get a look at their operations. Even thought you were coming in. It's all right. I just need to have a short chat with my counterpart. Is she in today? Yes. Uh, allow me to bust you in, sir. Walter. Issa. Shall we continue from last time? The luxury cruise line market is completely outside of our core competencies. Investing into it is a mistake. No, I'm here about... Wait a minute, a mistake. Our ship designers are the best in the settled systems. They design personal craft and military ships, Walter. Large-scale accommodations and hospitality is a completely different beast. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here I am, arguing with my partner. <laughs> And you're just standing right here. Issa Eklund, the hyphenated Eklund in our glorious company's branding. Co-CEO, heir to the Eklund fortune. And somewhere down there, I'm his wife, yes. Didn't know our marriage was such a low priority. Oh, it jumps up the list at the right moments. Ah, yes, the daring explorers my partner is so infatuated with. <laughs> you should hear him reciting that speech. <clears throat> There's no need to go into that. <laughs> oh, my heart skips a beat when he does it. Really, it does. Such passion. If he talked to the board that way, I wouldn't need to placate them so much. Who was it again, Walter? The founder of Constellation? Sebastian Banks. His final address before he disappeared. Second it. Believe me, I've heard it plenty of times from him already. I am not going to be forced into embarrassment in my own office. The answer is no. Talk to him about it later. Once he cools down, he'll be all ears. I know. It's my favorite hobby. Now, why are you here, my dear? The board meeting isn't for a while, and our vacations aren't coming up either. It's the discretionary fund, Issa. I need all of it. Ugh. This wouldn't have anything to do with that meeting you've set up at the Astro Lounge, would it? I never said that. Did you have an agent hack into my files again? Only after you had one hack into mine. Tell me. 
Can mutual distrust lead to a point where it's actually the same as mutual trust? Oh, just some light sparring, dear. Walter's actually very... attentive. When it's just the two of us. When you mix business and family, you learn to compartmentalize. A remarkably insecure location for a clandestine meeting. That was the point. Neutral territory in the open. With no leverage. Oh, you must let me help. It's been too long. I have this all taken care of. Some investigation into the cellar. What's motivating them? Then, some preliminary casing of the Astral Lounge for security flaws. Give you the advantage if things go wrong. Bribe a few bouncers, alter the codes on the doors. Yes, exactly. I hate being selfish, but I would like some time with my husband. We need to go through the fund authorizations anyway. James Newell is the broker who knows our seller. He'll be able to help you find out more about and it shouldn't be hard to find the Astral Lounge. Here, let me at least give you some operation funds since I won't be joining you. Meet me back here. I'm going to be present for the negotiation. I'm not leaving you to the Neon Sharks, I promise. This district certainly provides evidence that Ryujin's influence has spread from their tower and out into the city. Welcome to Newell's. If you're looking for any specific goods, Rosa and I guarantee we'll beat Sieghart's lousy selection every time. Rosa Newell is my wife. We own this place together. Sieghart's outfitters? Oh, come on. You don't have to pretend you haven't been to his poor excuse for a store off of Bayou Plaza. Oh, I don't have a problem with this place. My problem is Siegert himself. That man has absolutely no respect for the business community on Neon. He skips merchant meetings and refuses to participate in any of our group buys. Worst of all, he pays off Neon security to keep his place safe. A lot of the merchants in Neon belong to a small merchants alliance. It's nothing formal. It's just a bunch of us getting together to air our grievances and watch each other's backs. By standing up to the lowlifes who come in here expecting me to just hand over all of my money. I refuse to be run out of business, or be forced to pay protection. Yeah, sure, if all you care about is yourself. Every payment Seagert makes validates Neon Security's corruption. He's setting a bad precedent that many merchants are forced to follow. Anyway, sorry. I know I can get a little intense about these things. If you'll forgive the outburst and have a look around, I'm sure you'll find something you might want to buy. Maybe I didn't. Information isn't usually free. Easy, friend. Not looking for trouble. I guess maybe I can add this to his tab. Okay. I don't know much. But I did have one of my freelancers tail the seller back to his place. Sleep crate one. Let me write down the unit for you. I had to chase more zone heads out of here today. I don't think they even knew what planet they were. They're just kids having fun.
aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Oh, no, 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 no. Drugs are for street gangs and junkies. Aurora is on an entirely different level. I like to call it an exquisitely crafted transcendent experience. <laughs> Only problem is that won't fit on the package. Here, we'll take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie. The Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it. Can you really put a price on pleasure? The Astro Lounge is one of the safest places in all of Neon. Security is hand-picked from the finest officers in the city. I'm afraid that would be a serious fire hazard. And I think it's only fair to warn you that the network security on our doors is state-of-the-art. Private meetings are usually held in the floor above. Just use the elevators. Then I would say you'd be interested in the Astro Lounge VIP package. For a reasonable fee, our security can be your security. We do strive for setting the most reasonable rate. I'm sorry, but promises make for poor currency. I'm sorry, but our policies demand even high-profile customers pay our fees. Bullets flying would certainly be bad for the club's reputation. Well, I think we can certainly offer a discounted rate for you, if you were still interested. Excellent. Let me just apply that discount we discussed, and done. We do hope your meeting goes to your satisfaction. Oh, ben and I are good friends. <laughs> he personally gave me the job here at the Astral Lounge. Oh, he's a good man. Cares a lot about the citizens of Neon. Making sure they're all employed and well taken care of. A real humanitarian. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That's Borealis. Only 19 years old, and yet she produces some of the most heart-pounding, trippiest electronic music you've ever heard. I don't know where she gets her inspiration, but... Betting all that free Aurora she gets has something to do with it. Hope to see you again. to wear your helmet on this planet. You know that, right? Make sure you check every entry. There might be some embedded data we could use to our advantage. You're still so 
tense. Normally, once we're alone, your shoulders relax. They're... taut. We're on to something remarkable. Maybe what I've always dreamed of. I can tell. I can see your mind racing. I haven't even stopped to ask you how you're doing. I'm fine. The board complains, I assure them. There's the occasional assassination attempt. So, you don't need anything from me, then? I don't. Am I just some listless stargazer? You would have been better off marrying a hope or a tie, or someone who could be with you at every meeting. Oh, don't go on about that again. Needing you isn't the same as wanting you. And I'd much rather want my partner than need them. Less complicated. Now, I know Constellation seems to take up so much of my time. But I never stop thinking of you. Wondering what maneuvering you're doing to take over the company and drive me out. It's how I show my love. Is everything ready? Good. Let's be on our way, then. Goodbye, my dear. See you at the next board meeting? Oh, I'll be keeping an eye on this little operation. Just in case. Good luck, all of you. Catherine Luzion keeps demanding we look into her husband's murder. All right, we're here. Now, I don't know what the cellar looks like, but they'll have a security briefcase with them, larger than normal, big enough to hold the artifact. We should split up. The code phrase to identify yourself as the buyer is Ramsey and Travers. It's not like people who trade in stolen goods are eager to share personally identifying information. Are they? Hmm. Code phrases? My goodness, Walter, I think you're taking this espionage business a little too seriously. Remember, Ramsey and Travers. We'll meet back near the elevator. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy drinking? It's worth exactly zero credits, same as my career, so don't get any ideas. Oh really? I heard you all have a meeting in a few minutes, don't you? In one of those fancy VIP lounges? Speaking of which, I gotta get going myself. Excuse me. just saw our cellar walk by. Good job. Now before we head in there, let me go over the ground rules. He'll ask for twice what we agreed on. That's normal. He'll probably try to walk out. That's normal, too. Don't worry about the amount we actually settle on. The Stroud Eklund Discretionary Fund is just a chip to you and me. Our goal is to get him to accept that ship in exchange for the artifact. Anything goes as long as it's in our hands, and we're not dead. How does that sound? And this'll be fun. I find matching wits with the Neon Underworld to always be invigorating. Doc Manning better get his act together before the place shuts up. So you, Stroud, you look different in person. Our public relations always insists on doing some touch-ups for the official photos. Embarrassing, really. 
Your security here going to stand or sit for this little meeting, making me nervous. So polite. Almost makes me forget what planet I'm on. Am I to assume that briefcase has our item of interest? Yeah, here it is. Well, look at that. One of a kind. And I know you want it. I have the amount we agreed on. Uh-uh. Things have changed. I want double. Now how am I supposed to do that? I don't know, but your security here seems to have some fancy gear. Why don't they chip in? Oh really? And how do you know that? Who talked? Does it matter? We know you're in a fix, and we're still willing to buy. For the agreed-upon amount. I got people after me, okay? I can't just set on what we agreed on. I need more so I can disappear. That's not our problem. We came here expecting one amount. Now you want another. You telling me Walter Stroud ain't got the cash? I'll walk out of this booth right now. I leave now. I can get a jump start on the people after me, instead of you all wasting my time. You'd be on your way already if you just take the money I'm offering you and shut up. What's it going to be? Take or walk? I... Ah. Uh... All right. You win. Hand over the money. This... thing... is all yours. Well done. Some high pressure tactics, but we got what we were after. Time to go home, shall we? Stop right there. You're in possession of Slayton Aerospace property. Ah. Slayton must have been the original owner. We don't need to do this. All's fair on Neon. Am I right? Hand over Mr. Slayton's property. Now. Is there a problem here? Yes. This armed thug was trying to steal our belongings. I'm going to need you to back away from our VIPs. Now. Fine, but you can't stay in the Astral Lounge forever, Stroud. Nicholas Slayton's already got your number. Sending on men to the Astral Lounge. Slayton must be serious about getting the artifact back. We'd better get off the planet quickly. gone wrong, hasn't it? Slayton has put a bounty on your heads. He's greased a few palms. Your ship's been impounded at the spaceport. There goes our way out. The CEO of Slayton Aerospace. They're a systems manufacturer. Engines, thrusters... The same way everything works on Neon. Money. It's terrible at keeping secrets. Agreed. Have a talk with the man himself. Slayton Aerospace has offices here in the Trade Tower. If Nicholas is moving this quickly, he must be there or close by. Let's head to their lobby, shall we? See if we can make an appointment.
Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. Can I help you? Slayton Aerospace is the premier component supplier for a variety of Starship needs. But if you were supposed to be here, you would know that already. I'm afraid Mr. Slayton is a very busy man. I'm sure you do. We weren't expecting a VIP to come through today. Let me just run a few checks. Arguments with Mr. Slayton tend to go long. I'm not sure we can fit you in. I'm afraid we just can't book any more appointments today. Goodbye. Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. I'm afraid we aren't taking appointments right now. Hoping to get a meeting? I've been waiting all day. You have a question? You can chat with the receptionist all you want. Wait, this clearly isn't the executive level. He's on to us. Walter! Uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. A bold move, but one easily counted. Oh, we're trapped. Hello, Walter, dear, are you there? Yes, sir. Took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slayton's security consultants. They've patched me in. All right. We've got her out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay? For the moment, Slayton will be scrambling his own security teams once he gets wind that we're no longer at his mercy. Our time is limited. I'm aware of the irony of me continuing to say it'll be easy. But it'll be easy. Doors will open in three, two, one. Slayton's guards and employees are all over. Be careful. Okay. You'll want to use the vent system to slip around unnoticed. There's a cover just to the right of the elevator you came in on. That's the elevator you came in on. Jump right across the top of it and keep going to the end. Drop down and follow the conduit all the way to the end, past the fork. Close in the shop. 
shutters. <laughs> Another robot up ahead. Wait for it to pass, then head straight across to the maintenance door next to the security gate. Go now. Let me just get that for you. Security is on full alert. No point slipping through unnoticed now. You'll have to fight your way to the exit.
This is a private office? You're coming in just behind the executive elevators. I'll call the one on the far end, and you can walk right over the top. You know, it's moments like this that really makes Neon the best place to do business. You steal what's mine. I trap you in the city. You infiltrate my office. I lock it down. Where else can you match wits for the highest stakes but here? <laughs> Aren't you? In the back of your mind, through the tunnel vision of adrenaline, there's a part of you that belongs here. It happens to all of us. Ah, it seems you have chosen more violence. Very well. There he is.
Time to go. Let's talk more back at the ship. Traveling with a criminal.
was a line I told myself I'd never cross. Do you really think we did the right thing back there? There was no other way? I can't argue with that. I'm just used to costs only being measured in money whenever I can help it. Wrong. Preserving life at all costs. That's what matters. That's who we are as Constellation and as human beings. Well, I may not agree with every outcome. But you did everything to accomplish our goals and more. I don't often get a chance to work in the field. So, thank you. I know now isn't the best time, but I need to talk with you later. Ready for takeoff in three, two, one. by our own unique morality. Tell us, please. What are the artifacts? What are they for? Did you make them? What gives you more right to them than humanity? Answering your questions is exactly what we cannot allow. Abandon your thirst for knowledge or drown in it. Just knowing what you are be dangerous. Our distance from you is the whole point. We interfere now because we must. I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the scans. Energy output from that ship is far above the normal range. If we spin up the grab drive now, we have a chance. We should check in with Mateo or Noel. How is Neon? Are you? Are you okay? No. Okay. I'll start transferring the data over now. Let me just bring it up on here at the table. Is that... is that a prototype? No, that material isn't anything we... What the... Everyone, come take a look at this. Uh, 
Let's no faction vessel or crimson fleet. Secret mill Teletech, maybe? Hmm, no United Colonies Admiral approved that starship design. They call themselves the Star Lord, demanding we hand over the artifact. Like we were children, playing with their parents' things. What do people know? Any offshoot groups go by that name? Not in any corner of the settled systems I've seen. Maybe a distant human colony finally popping its head up. Uh, another house for a room. I very much doubt that. We ignoring the obvious here? A heretofore unknown group who just happens to know about the artifacts. I'm just gonna say it. Intelligent alien life or extra dimensional beings. Original creators from the furthest fringes of space. Or beyond even that. Is the metaphor of avenging angels coming down to keep humanity from forbidden knowledge not apt here? So, we have a lot of theories, but nothing concrete. Except that they're after the artifacts, and they're willing to take them by force. No settled systems lab made these things, and I doubt one of them made that ship either. So we got some weird extra-dimensional beings that coincidentally decide to build their spacefaring vessels exactly like we do. I'm not so sure about that. Noel, start analyzing all the data from the ship sensors, the gravitational wave they caused, scans of their weapons, shields, everything. We're in the dark. We need to learn anything about them we can, including some way to fight them if necessary. Until then, we stay the course, collect the artifacts. It's even more important now that an intelligence we don't know or understand is looking for them. That ship could be anywhere in deep space. Even if we got lucky, a single grav jump and we'd lose them. All we can do is be more cautious, but we are not stopping. This could end up being a race we don't want to lose. Vladimir, has the eye picked up anything new? Some glints of shine in the dark. Ready to hand them out as soon as you please. All right. Good luck, everyone. And be careful out there. I may regret this, but there's something I'd like to ask you about. I'm so always... But we need to be as really a lot of pressure on this, isn't there? Possible negative effect. This right. Never regretted coming out of retirement. Constellations got the writ of the righteous. Keeps me young. You had a hell of a shake getting bullied in the void. Starborn sure know how to make an entrance. Ready to head back out there? The eye can help you find the artifacts. But I'm afraid she's blind to our new competitor. No telling the exact number, but they're getting harder to find. Got some equipment, repairs, and upgrades on the making-do list. The eye's straining to her limits these days. Double-check the safety and locks wherever you go, okay? Exploration's dangerous, even without some nefarious group trying to kill you. Got something for me? Bye bye. Carry Sight it. is clear. Descent started. I'm ahead. Hey, we made it down so I can carry a copy. I'll copy down too. You know how you lose things. I still don't know how you lost that picture of Nibbles the Comedy Eating Bunny.
If you're searching them, make it quick.
was that? Bring it on. Looks like we're in the clear. I wanted to talk to you, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. The Starborn's technology is simply astonishing. It's just almost too much to process. Yes, I suppose I am. But you can hardly blame me, can you? You do understand the significance of this encounter, don't you? This is humankind's first contact with what I believe is an alien race. A race with technology that could be far superior to our own. Oh, we could learn so much from them. The way they behaved, I'd say that's not very likely. If we are to learn anything from the Starborn, we're going to have to take the initiative ourselves. I wouldn't say I was afraid. More like approaching the situation with caution. Can't be a coincidence that these Starborn suddenly appeared after your experience at that temple. We know they're here to lay claim to the artifacts, but what's their true motivation? What aren't they telling us? I feel exactly the same way, but it certainly sounded like they weren't willing to work with us at all. Damn. Oh, if only we knew more about the Starborn. What their species is like, where they're from, how they're able to speak our language. I feel like a cadet on my very first day aboard a spaceship. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions. Obviously, but there has to be more to these beings than simply originating from another world. Their name alone, Starborn. There's some type of hidden meaning there. Something that feels very old, perhaps even ancient. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you that Constellation intends to get to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm, I'm not really sure. Scientifically speaking, we're all born from the stars. Most of the chemical components of our body, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, are exactly the same as those manufactured by internal stellar reactions. Now, ask someone like Matteo the same question, and he'd probably give a more theological answer. But hey, it's all a guessing game anyway. Exactly. We must use all of the tools at our disposal to learn more about the Starborn and their connection to the artifacts. Thank you. I really appreciate your support right now. You know, it's funny. When I was a little girl, I'd lay on the ground and stare up at the stars. I was absolutely convinced they held a secret. I'd remain there for hours in silence. Eyes closed, listening, waiting for the secret to be whispered in my ear. This encounter with the Starborn is that moment to me. The stars are finally whispering, and I need to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Although I'm flattered that you think of me that way, there's a time and a place for that sort of talk. This is definitely not one of them. 
Well then, I've certainly wasted enough of your valuable time. Just do be careful if you cross paths with these Starborn in the future. I wouldn't want to lose one of the most valuable members of Constellation. Yes? Dropping off a few choice items? Talk to you later.
out there. My kill, my share. <laughs> Forget me. <laughs> See if they've got any weapons or ammo. Let's see what you've got. Maybe another time. Thank you. 
junk you're hauling is seriously slowing you down. you need? Glad to haul whatever you need.
Perhaps we could spend a bit of time relaxing rather than planning? Can I help? So long. Do you have a new set of orders for me today? Look at how far we've come. It's all becoming so overwhelming. The Starborn, the artifact visions, the music. Is it all worth it? Mateo, are you having a crisis of faith? You? What if the Starborn are right? What if our hunt for the artifacts is a fool's errand, doomed to failure and catastrophe? You think we're doing the wrong thing? We just want answers. Isn't that why we all joined in the first place? The noble quest of discovery? Exactly. When the universe presents us with a threat, we can't afford to run away. We need to stay in the fight. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shame either of you. Blame the workings of a worried mind. I just hope that this journey doesn't turn us into something that we wouldn't recognize from where we are now. Hate to interrupt, but I have a favor to ask. Lot of equipment on the eye has reached the span's end. If we're going to find more artifacts further out, we need work done. Got the nods and signs from Sarah and Walter for the materials, but I need hands. Console parts, replacement wires that have burned out, some fixes to the intercom between the station and the lodge. Won't be going alone. Need more than just the you and I. Ask around. A few constellations are already on their way up. Vladimir code up his system the first time. Now, how did this work again? Could just give my ingenious software a test run. Now, that is some fine team. Lend a hand, grab a couple of wrenches, and let's tighten this equipment down. Never regretted coming out of retirement. Constellations got the writ of the righteous. Keeps me young. You call her the wrong wires. Station showing red. Nastier than I measured. Figured a few of the parts might be iffy. But this is going to take more than a span. Oh, I should have checked the compatibility when we made the order. I can stay with you until we get all this fixed. No need for the martyr's clothes, but I'm happy to have the help. As for you, while we're giving the eye the swords, need to tip your ear on another matter when you got the time. Don't want to worry anyone. We got more competition. Not Starborn. Rival Collector. Captain Petrov. 
owns a salvager vessel called the Scow. Runs it like a palace of novelties. And he's got a new prize in his collection. The scavenger hires every gun and knife willing to chop relics out of their owner's hands for pay. Scrapes out any derelict ships his mosquitoes can find. Reached out through my hand to hands to see if we can do an honest swap. He says the rock ain't for sale for any price. I think we're gonna need a crowbar and bag for this one. He's got a reputation for seeing the gold in things, but he's no lab coat. Thinking he knows it's unique, but not why. All the more reason to clutch tightly. Left the life of a jack of ones behind myself. I know what I'm asking. But I see a clutch prize not up for the prying any other way. Not sending you lone hook on the job. I want Sam with you on this one. You two will be foot to foot the whole way, so make sure you're ready. As we always say, each member of Constellation is their own conscience. I'll leave the details of the doing to you. Catch a smile out there. This is where I'm... Can you get a moment? Can we talk? Late at night in dive bars. Sometimes the old timers share stories. About things they've seen that they just couldn't explain. Ghost stories, if you will. I've heard of things like the Starborn before. But they're real. Honest to God, real. Will you carry on for centuries of exploration? And you can fool yourself into thinking you've got it all figured out. Clearly we don't. So the obvious question is, what the hell are they? Everyone's gonna be thinking aliens, but maybe not. Their ships were incredible, but they still felt like ships. They had engines, weapons, I think I even made out a grav drive. If they were really alien, I would just expect it to be more alien, you know? I mean, it could be some secret Freestar Perun or UC tech, but I don't know. Yeah, well, you might be right. I'm gonna throw out another wild stab in the dark theory. Maybe they're from outside our known systems. Here's the hypothetical. Centuries ago, some brainiac scientists decide to play settler. But they go way, way beyond any place we've ever been to set up stakes. Once they get there, they make a few lucky breakthroughs, and their science just snowballs from there. I can see them getting further, faster, and hence, become the Starborn. If I got it right, then you owe me a steak dinner. One way or the other, we are not alone. And that's... <laughs> That's both exciting and terrifying.
If we just had ourselves some good snow drifts, we could have a blast. Let you on board. Thought Petrov was done hiring mosquitoes. Or maybe you're after something from the captain's collection. Well, he calls us some old Earth term. Yeah? What kind of salvage work you do? Ship? Ground battlefield? Or do you just skulk the back alleys picking through trash? Sounds about right. A lot of spare parts out there. If you don't think too hard about the last guy who had them. Hey, if it's abandoned, it's fair game. Rules of salvage. <laughs> You're all right, scavenger. Go on ahead. Trade it for some dusty hauling ore from the fringe. <laughs> Was glad when he left. It's all shakes and muttering. Strewn about all over. The good stuff's locked up in a vault for Petrov's own personal viewing pleasure. And before you ask, Petrov's the only one with the keys, so don't try bribing any of the crew. You just waste your money. Petrov's got a whole little alien zoo in the back. He's asking for trouble with those things. But the locks on the cages are pretty high-end. Thankfully. Fine. Just ignore me then. Need something? I wouldn't say no to an upgrade. Later.
You know, people say he's mad, but I like Petro. Runs a good ship. Enjoy your time on board the scow. Ah, I wasn't aware we had the visitors. Wadik, you didn't tell me we had visitors. <sighs> we have visitors. Excellent. Now that you've gone to all this trouble to get here, you should make yourself at home. Relax. Kick up your feet on the tables. I don't care they have scorch marks on them anyway. Oh, ho, ho. flattery, huh? My favorite pastime, huh? Between you and me, I do have something very special in the vault. Ah, but my jealous heart knows no bounds. I want to keep it all to myself.
tempting. I do love showing off. But my security team will have a heart attack. It would be against all those protocols that I admittedly told them to make. Oh, -ho, you do have a point. I suppose it would be quite unfriendly to turn down a comrade in arms. Ah, very well. What's a quick look going to hurt, huh? I know. People look you at know. me and say, Petrov. If it Your were whole up to ship me, is a testament we wouldn't of let people on Why the ship you need a special vault? Well, all I can say is that even the greatest collection needs its own private viewing area. Plus, between you and me, there are thieves everywhere. So I spared no expense. The free door between me and my treasures is painful, but that is the price of security. Okay, Sarah. Just a bit further. This ship and I have been through some adventures, I'll tell you. I once collected salvage from a demo celestial class while it was exploding. The crew was scraping scorch marks and bits of metal off the hull for weeks. And of course, there was the time I. A lot of the guards here are bounty hunters, smugglers, or salvagers. Navy vessel under a particularly uproarious celebration of my latest acquisitions of fine art. But we were wedged perfectly between their two thrusters and were able to just kind of push them back into the star yard for repairs. Who sold me this told me that it spoke to him that holding it for the first time was like drowning in your own soul alas I've held it several times and my soul is still breathing devoid of any such enlightenment why yes he did Oh, no. No, no, no. I can't. This one is mine. And it's only fair to warn you. Hands off! I would hate to sour our new friendship by becoming the victim of piracy. Hey, we're not pirates. Except, well, when we really need something for really, really good reasons. Yeah, that does sound a little piratey, doesn't it? I'm afraid not. I'm easy in all things, except my collection. Then I suppose it's just a question whether my immeasurable love for my collection and my crew of hired cutthroats is enough to stop you. Go ahead. Make a move for the artifact. Let's see what happens. I don't see any moves we got left here. I could uh, really bend your ear when you got a moment. Uh, 
So how much of a thrill has it been traveling with the one and only last descendant of the great Solomon Co? Is it everything you imagined? <laughs> yeah, but no autographs, okay? I gotta say, it's a relief being with you. So many people hear Cole and they expect me to pull some miracle out of a hat. Time has a way of just building on itself. Solomon was a good man. Great one, even. But if he ever heard all the bullshit being talked about him these days, he'd flat out deck him. I am. And I'm not. Yeah, there, uh, there was a time, well before Cora, where it really weighed on me. I felt like every little thing I did or didn't do was a reflection on our great legacy. It's enough to drive you crazy. Now I just hope I can help Cora to... I don't know. Your kind words are appreciated. For my father, Cora, and me, everything starts and ends with Solomon Co. He looked out at the stars, and he dreamed a way to get there. Imagine being the first person to jump into a new system, set foot on a new world. Well, I get it. That's powerful stuff. And now... <laughs> I'm just getting sappy. You're a bad influence, you know that? I believe that might be the most honest thing you've ever said. <laughs> Well, I hope the comic book they make about our adventures is better than that rag on Solomon. The stuff they publish is just downright embarrassing. Steal what is mine, and I will ensure that every security officer in the United Colonies knows you're nothing but a common pirate. Nice pirate pass. You're lucky the captain's you a want. coward. If you it was mine, it's yours. Go a few more rounds.
pirate. We're not gonna forget this. I'm feeling good now. You feeling good? Damn pirate. Get what you came for and leave. Damn it, Petrov. I was just getting warmed up. I'm not getting in your way. Take everything you want. Uh, hey there. You done looting yet?
wants. Are you training for some sort of weightlifting competition?
You need something? I wouldn't say no to a gift. Later. Better we get it than someone else. Whoa. Hey, this is me. Backing off. It's over, right? You're gonna leave? Damn pirate. Get what you came for and leave. I'm not getting in your way. Take everything you want. Captain says you're okay? You're okay. Captain Petrov well, says we stand nice. down. What you came for so we're standing down. I just had to drop a few pounds, and I don't mean to die. So what? We're just going to let you loot the ship?
I must confess, the hum of a grab drive, share the wealth, right? Yeah, I was done too. Filthy pirate. Damn pirate. We're not Get what you came for this. and leave. You're lucky the captain's a coward. If it were me, I'd say we'd go a few more rounds. Damn it, Petrov. I was just getting warmed up. Lucky the captain's a coward. If it were me, I'd say we'd go a few more rounds. Please drop some of that. I'm hurting just watching you. What do you want? You've won.
Bell sure seems worried. Vladimir. Vlad, come in. Come in. The eye's gone completely dark. I, I can't reach anyone on the station. Are you? What did you do to our friends? They call me the Hunter. And now that I'm here, your part in glimpsing the unity is over. I'm already on my way. Say goodbye to your friends. It won't be long. Forget about us! That starborn bastard is after the artifacts! You can't let him take them! Pack up the collection, move it somewhere they can't find it! He's right. We need to bunker down here and get those artifacts ready to move. Might need every gun to hold that starborn off. What about everyone on the eye? We can't leave them to die up there. Can't blame you, but sure could use your help when that Starborn comes knocking. I don't know how long it's going to take to pack up the artifacts. I... I'll get started. Hopefully this will only take a few minutes if my hands can stop shaking. Everyone take cover. Now. Where? Do you really expect them to barge through the front door? Well, I'm not expecting them to ring the bell. You leaving? Barricade the door once you're out. We'll be able to let you back in. You too. Oh, thank heavens. You're all right. No time to waste. Let's get going. Alive. Krix's ghost can keep waiting. No tears for the old. Got the others to worry about. Okay, I admit, uh, my famous personality wasn't so much help with this one. I'll be fine. I just uh, need to lie down for a bit longer. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I can move right away. But I'll make it. Go on. Sam. Sam, can you hear me? It's Sarah. This 
nothing you can do now. He's not going to make it. Sam. Cora will be fine. Okay, Sam? We won't let anything happen to her. Dad! Dad, get up! Get up! Please? Go away! I told him you were coming. He just had to hold on a little longer. I hate you! Leave me alone! Constellation has lost people before, but not like this. I appear to only be seriously damaged instead of critically damaged. Fortunate that you are likewise relatively undamaged is also preferable to the alternative. I should run some additional diagnostics before resuming normal function. It went <clears throat> quickly after you left. We held him off while Noel escaped through the basement. There's a door that leads to the well district. Took you long enough. No, well, she might still be in danger. There's a secret door in the basement, leads right to the well district. That would have been the safest route for her to run. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I still have the artifacts, but where do we take them? Oh, there you are. I wasn't expecting you to run to the eye. You! You're not getting the artifacts. <laughs> yes. Let's see if they can slip from my grasp this time, shall we?
You're back. Thank the Blackest Sea that you and Noel are safe. And the artifacts? The lodge. So, we slip from the Starborn's grasp, but not before taking a stab straight in the heart. We... Uh, we need to talk locks and bolts. Lodge and the Eye are not secure. Just means he's playing the waiting man's game. He'll be back once we've done all the work of collecting the other pieces. The hunter, he, um... He probably found us because we're somewhere obvious. High populated area. Just like how the Starborn found you orbiting Neon the first time. But the fact that they're competing with us to find the artifacts means they can't get them without searching. So we put the artifacts somewhere in the fringe, or on something that can slip from their grasp if they do another strike from the curtain. Clear from the few encounters we've had, that the artifacts are all the Starborn prize. They could come after us, though. Try to find out where we put them. Need to take the risk. The eye, the equipment in the lodge, not easily moved. Gotta hope whatever is giving the hunter pause applies to the hole. Just need to make another direct hit less the jackpot. Hope your walls are high, just in case the Starborn get lucky and find the spot to do the breach and storm. Here, keep the artifacts safe. I guess we'll meet back at the lodge after. suffered losses before, oh, really? yeah. although none quite so violently. We all feel like we've been kicked into the ground a million times over, but I think I have something. I'm serious. If I may, I know our encounter with the hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? Exactly. Somehow. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus' speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but why not talk to him? It's right here in the city, just a block or so from the lodge. There's no harm in gathering more information. A visit to the Sanctum might actually be quite enlightening. Thank you. I know it's not much to go on, but... Something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. I have something I need to discuss with you.
Maybe we should stop for a moment at the memorial. You know, to pay our respects. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Ah, oh, Mateo. It's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Well, what's on both your minds? Oh. Yeah. How humanity comes together. Uh, how we are to love each other, even as our universe becomes even more complex. That's not exactly what we mean. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well, does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside. Even just the sound of his voice is... Simple jump. The same as I'd made dozens of times before, and yet something touched me. Something warm and kind and good. Now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? We've lost people, Keeper. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And these Starborn, I take it they're different from the people of the settled systems? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path of discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but. Maybe it's more. I'm not sure if he was. But if what you're looking for is connected, then anything might be possible. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation 
of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? Yes, something must be there. I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe the answer will become clear when we have more. The House of Enlightenment and Varun have versions of this story. The Enlightened work out of the well here in New Atlantis helping the poorest citizens find a better life for themselves. The rune worshippers are more enigmatic, but there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, you're not. Sorry. Can I help you? We don't mean to be intrusive. Any information you could provide would be very useful. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a unity pilgrim, but... Since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. Yeah, I mean, he's always going on about trying to bring people of all beliefs together. Really wants there to be some shared story or origin. Look, I like the Keeper, but belief is the problem, okay? We don't need a shared narrative or theology. We need to help each other in practical terms. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no. The Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of two that. It's part of our core principles. There's no God pushing us to do good for some eternal reward. We have to help each other because we choose to. If no one takes responsibility for making the settled systems better, then we're just leaving it to the tyrants to bully the rest of us. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Besides what the Keeper would say about it? Sounds like a gathering point, or a center. Or, in mathematics, it would mean one, like the one, the first or the beginning. Always happy to help. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of aid efforts to coordinate. They say never hire a man when a machine can do it for free.
not sure if those Varun zealots live in space or got separated from their home planet or what, but they scavenge what they need. Lots of old facilities left over from the colony war, and they like to pick them clean. A visitor? I have all the company I need. Jokes. <laughs> you come to hear about Varun. Like the guards. Like the Keeper. I don't think it was a joke. It was an attempt at some genuine sympathy. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. Anything you could tell us would be tremendously helpful. Yes, I have spoken to your keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him. And then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down. But the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Then we are done. Leave me. Well, you're back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. What else did you learn? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Well, I suppose that'll make someone laugh. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum. At four and 120. That's where you'll find the Pilgrim's resting place. And from there, Maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it?
Conviction, another word for strength. Can the truth not be revealed to the weak? Someone with doubts. That belief can come and go could be argued to be the very mechanics of faith itself, like breathing air in and out. What do you believe? Your only path is forward then? Finding the meaning of unity is a totality that you cannot ever step away from? Conviction is what gives all of us at Constellation our strength. Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth.
Okay, that's it. Time to sell some of your junk. beautiful sculpture. Hmm. I suspect it was placed here for some sort of specific purpose rather than as an artistic statement.
Emissary, perhaps? And their ship, the Helix. I believe they ambushed you above Neon and demanded that artifact you worked so hard to gain. Thank you for the stellar introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. Yes, we did. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship. Demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. Yes. Let's talk about what really matters. The unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. So, uh, I gotta say, this part is more awkward than I thought. Hiding my face was way easier. I'm not who you think I am. This universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts. And the hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts. And they opened the way to the center of my universe and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the Unity. When I stepped into it, I became a Starborn. It's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. And that's the problem. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the temples, the anarchy that can be unleashed. 
Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? It means I've seen thousands of universes. Collected their artifacts, been to their temples. You have a small taste of their power, but it keeps going. You mean yet? Go through the unity a thousand times and you'll gain a better perspective. I have hopes for you. Higher hopes than the other members of Constellation. They all end up like the Emissary. You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the Unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. 
One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit, you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary. To decide what to do about you. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the Emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. And sometimes the Emissary has gotten to me first, and I never arrive. Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me, packing through Constellation. And it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own, that's new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force. All the things I do. I am many things. But I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter. But the Unity itself doesn't judge. <laughs> no end up having this meeting at this time but it's the usual affair can we make peace no oh how tragic honestly i was beginning to wonder why i kept tending and it's bad habit i started a long time ago perhaps i just like meeting the emissary to gloat <laughs> But you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. Of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say 